this evening. And I have a lot to cover, and so listen fast. I made it preaching fast. And this isn't a message that I can pick up on another day. This is a message that needs to be preached this evening. And it's a message that I, I will do my dead level best to get through, giving you all the material in which I can. But in Ephesians chapter 5 this evening, a timely message, a message that has I've been asked about on numerous occasions, and uh, one that feel like this is where the Lord... We'll be back in Nehemiah. Uh, we've got a handful of messages left in Nehemiah, and uh, we'll finish up that book and move on to something else. But here in the book of Ephesians is where we'll be this evening, Ephesians chapter number 5. And uh, for sake of time, I'm going to start in verse number 8. So let's all stand together, all we can and will this evening, in Ephesians chapter number 5. And look in verse number 8. We'll read verses 8 through 14. Um, and we'll see what the Lord has for us here in this evening. The Bible says in verse number 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Now listen here. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light <coughs> He's saying right there, what you do, no matter if it's in secret or not, no matter if you do it where the brethren don't see it, no matter if you do it where the pastor don't see it, it does come to light. Be sure your sin will find you out. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, and whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You can be seated this evening. And uh, we're going to look here this evening at these scriptures. And this evening's going to be a bit of a, a touchy subject, if you will. It's going to be a sensitive subject. And it's not a topic that should, in my opinion, be a touchy subject around the house of God. But unfortunately, in the day that we're living in, it seems to be that folks get upset concerning this issue that I'm going to cover tonight. I'm going, to be, uh, I'm going to be truthful with you this evening. I am going to tell you what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you where I stand on it and why I stand there according to the Scripture. The topic for this evening has caused me and my family many heartaches over the years. It is a topic that, uh, unfortunately, people tend to get mad at you whenever you preach against because... They're more in love with this than they are the Bible in many cases. Verse number 11 of Ephesians 5 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. It is my duty, it's your duty, it's our duty to reprove any unfruitful works yes, of sir. darkness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Would you say that when he says that, that it's a command given? Or, Brother Reggie, it's just a suggestion. Command given. I say it's a command, wouldn't you? Yes, and John 14, 15 tells us that if you love me, to keep my commandments. So I know this ain't going to win many points with the brethren tonight. I know this isn't going to win many points. And to be honest with you, when it comes to standing with the Lord or standing with man, I'm going to take the Lord every time. Amen. I have lost family and friends over my stand with the Bible, and I will lose more. If it comes down to being a choice yes. between him or my God. Wow. The subject I want to cover is a bit of a themed message, if you will, due to the fact of the time of year that it is. I want to preach on this topic right here tonight. Mm -hmm. The tragedy of Halloween. The tragedy of Halloween. As we look at the history of this day and where it came from and what it has evolved into, you'll see the necessity of the title of the message this evening being that it's a tragedy that we have found within our country. It's a sad place that we are with our churches today that are holding events designed in good fun, yet causing so much confusion yes. to the children. Now, being that I'm amongst saints, that understand the scriptures, who is the author 
of confusion. Right. Satan. Satan, right? So when you start causing confusion, aren't you acting on his stick? Mm -hmm. Think about that for a moment. We're going to get there this evening, I promise you. Like I've said before, I don't care how many tracks you pass out while you're passing out candy. I don't care how many tracks you passed out while somebody comes by with blood dripping off of their cheeks and, and a witch's cap on and a little broom that they're riding. I don't care how many tracks you give to that person. That's no different than me going down here to the local bar and sitting down passing out tracks to people sitting at the bar and talking to them about, let me buy you another beer and then wrapping a track around you. You say, Pastor, do you really think it's that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I think it's just as wicked in that way as well. The church of the day has allowed the tragedy of Halloween to continue. Yes. It's a sad state, Brother Peter, that we're in mm -hmm. right now. And so I'm going to blow the whistle on it. I'm going to blow the whistle on it, and I'm going to do everything I can to give you scripture tonight and explain to you why the Christians should have no fellowship with the darkness that is Halloween. Amen. Brother Peter Taylor, how about you just play this? Heavenly Father, I pray tonight and thank you for this time in the Word, Father, and I just pray that uh, each heart here will be attentive to the Word and, and that we listen and uh, apply what we uh, what we hear, Father. And I just pray that you give that the wisdom and Father, the boldness to preach it. Give us what we need to hear. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight's message will be something that Miss Cat and a lot of folks don't want to hear. And if this is a if this is something that you have participated in, in the past, I'm not shooting at you. Okay? I'm not shooting at you at all. Uh, listen, there's ignorance is bliss, right? It, it's good. It, it's good whenever you don't know something. God don't hold you accountable for that. However, I would not be doing my job as a pastor if I didn't explain to you this topic and understand from the Bible where uh, where we are to ignore uh, this. Not going to call it a holiday. I, I may end up calling it a holiday sometime just out of habit. But this day in of the dead in which people celebrate today. It's my job as a pastor to tell you the truth. Yes. It's my job as a Listen, you, you can be ignorant to certain things. Sure. But Miss Robin, to stay in that ignorance is stupid. Right. Amen. It, it, it's foolish to stay right. in ignorance. <laughs> and um, so it, I want to preach this message because I take my calling seriously. Mm -hmm. And I take being called to be the under shepherd of Hope Bible Baptist Church seriously. Amen. And I don't want anyone to stand before the God before the God of heaven one day, Brother Matt, and say, Well, I didn't know. Right. And I don't want to stand before God and tell him, Well, I wasn't going to preach on that because I might have lost people. Yeah, I wasn't going to preach on that because Miss Candy people may never come that would have come. Mm. Now listen, I understand that this may not be anything that affects the people within this room right now. Right. And I get that. However, understand this tonight. Anything that becomes silent in the pulpit mm -hmm. will soon become a problem mm -hmm. within the congregation. That's right. So it's my duty tonight to make sure that I cry loud and spare not. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. to, to show what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. I, I contribute most of your trunk and treats. Most of Easter egg hunts, most of your fat boy stuff in plays at Christmas time, most of that stuff, Brother Matt, I contribute all that to the silencing of the pool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I contribute that to them. Well, Pastor, you would get more people to come. Listen, if you love dressing up, Easter egg hunts, and a man in a red suit one you love your Bible, yeah. you ain't going to stick around here very long anymore. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. The purpose of tonight's message, that this is a question that has come about in my family here of recent. I and Brother Matt received phone calls, received texts. What does the Bible say? Pastor, what does the Bible say about this? So, as I'm telling you, it may not be something that affects you here, but it affects you here. Yes. Yes, it does. Understand? I've received things from people, phone calls, texts, given a lot of scripture out over the past couple of weeks concerning this. And um, the sad part of it is a lot of people, Miss Jessica can't go to their pastor because their pastor believes contrary to the Bible. It's a sad place to be. Sad place to be. Now, let me ask you a question. 
you love your pastor. Amen. We still love you. <laughs> Amen. I'm still going to preach you anyway. Amen. The purpose of this is to figure out the issue where the Bible stands. Halloween is coming whether we like it or not. Everywhere you look, you see the darkness of this day. Brother Tom, it's everywhere that we look. Everywhere you go, everywhere you turn. Right now, you, you walk around a corner in a store and there's a goblin mask right in front of you. There, there's kids running around acting like they're a witch, acting like they're a ghost, acting like they're any number of things. These things are happening right in front of us everywhere you go. So you see the darkness of what Halloween is. Now, out of habit, like I said, I may end up calling this a holiday it is nothing holy about this day. That's what a holiday is, is a holy day. There's nothing holy about this day, not in our day anyway. Uh, even if you dress up as Bible characters, still celebrating this day in which is surrounded by death. And I don't serve the God of death. I serve the God of life, right? Look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Real Peter, I was really hoping Miss Suzanne be here. She, I hope she's watching right now because I was going to get on to her about that, that broom she's always yeah. right. <laughs> and I tell her that's the Son of God. <laughs> she's watching, man. I hope she's on. If yeah. not, that's not going to be near as funny. But tell her she can go back and watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> so, anyway. Oh, my. Stephen always gives her a bit about that. So I told her one day she walked in and had a broom. I said, Stephen told me to give you your ride home. And her broom, she just laughed. It was so funny. But anyway. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. <clears throat> the Bible says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Would you agree with me that Satan is subtle oh, in his attacks? He was with thee. He has been with you and I. He's very, very subtle. Now, how can you get more subtle in your attack? Brother Danny, then infiltrating churches with darkness. Amen. Amen. Get us to think that it's okay. It's all in good fun. All because it's happening at a church. And it's okay because my pastor is leading the charge. The problem we run into is that later on as they grow and as they begin to get out in the world a little bit and seeing things, they're going to remember, oh, well, you know what? I, everybody talks about how ungodly Halloween is. So, and that didn't hurt me none. So now they got it in their mind, well, I can go and do this, that, or the other. You saw all that wouldn't happen. I've seen it happen too many times. I have a friend of mine that I grew up with, and due to Halloween and his dressing up at Halloween, he became a wicked. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, he did. He became a warlock and all that garbage that goes along with that, a druid, which is, we'll talk about a little bit later, is a priest, a pagan priest. He became all that. You ask him about it, and yet it started because he started dressing up in darkness, painting his fingernails and doing things of that nature, the wickedness and the darkness that buys into Halloween. You say, oh, it's not that serious. It is that serious. Right. It'd be that serious if it was your young. Yes, sir. It'd be that serious if it was your niece, your nephew. Yeah, that's right. Amen. <clears throat> they begin to turn against preaching. They turn against the Bible and on the way they go. The church has created it <clears throat> as what at one time was called All Saints Day. They, they made this alteration. They made this uh, as an alternative, if you, if you will, to a pagan ritual day, which was on the 31st, the, uh, or on October 31st, the Druids, the Celtic Druids, they would, um, that was the end of their year, so that was their New Year's Eve. And so then you get up on November 1st, that's New Year's Day. So they celebrated their New Year's Eve by dressing up and doing all this stuff, as we'll cover here in just a few moments. 
Well, what the Catholic Church did, and that ought to tell you everything you need to know right there, what the Catholic Church did is they said, we need to have something different than the pagans. So we will have what's called All Hallows Day on November 1st. On their New Year's Day, we'll have All Hallows Day. And what that is, is like All Saints Day was what they originally called it. Now, it ended up, All Hallows Day or All Saints Day, it ended up being that on the eve of that would be All Hallows Eve, right? And where we get the name now as Halloween that we find. But what they had done, now listen, they used that All Saints Day, Miss Cat, as a day to celebrate the martyrs. And that's what it was about, Miss Robin. They would celebrate the martyrs. Now listen, I don't think God's ever uh, designed us to celebrate a man uh, every year on a certain day. I don't believe that. Uh, but listen, it's a whole lot better than where we are today and, and what's going on on these days. But that's what it was designed for. The Catholic Church had designed it <clears throat> to be that way. So with that being said, as the celebration and as this new tradition began sweeping its way through Europe, traveled through Europe, the pagans got a hold of it and all their festivals and things of that nature. They started celebrating the witches. They started celebrating and participating. The church began participating in the different events that were going on. And here is why and where the tragedy has come into play. The Druids, being pagan priests, led the way in creating what we see today. The Celts, like I said, they ended their year on October 31st. They, they started celebrating Samhain, the festival, and that is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Lord of the Dead. That was their festival that took place on that day. Now, their New Year's Eve ritual would include death coming forth and, and witches and things of that nature, witches and ghosts that we see today. They had community bonfires and they masqueraded. Everybody knows what a masquerade is? You wear a mask, right? So they masqueraded around. They carved jack-o'-lanterns and such. They worshipped black cats. Any of this sounding familiar to what we see in our communities today and what we even see in some churches today? Let me say this this evening. The church of this time joined in on all this stuff. And due to that, it's closely associated with the devil is closely associated with witchcraft, the dead, and Catholicism. You may say, Pastor, you celebrate Christmas, you celebrate Easter, and they have pagan signs in them. Yeah, you're right. Pagans have attached themselves to about anything. But let me ask you this. I have and I will continue to celebrate the birth of my Savior without pagan symbols. I can remove the fat man in red and not miss a beat. I can still celebrate Christmas just fine. And we have for 17 years. I can remove the bunny that lays eggs and still celebrate the resurrection of my Savior. Amen. Amen. I can remove all that. And now what do we get, though, if we remove the trick or treat? What do we get if we remove the masks, the black cats, the, the, the ghosts, and the goblins, and the witches? What do we get if we remove all that stuff? We get nothing. It's just another day. Just another day. So, okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm removing all that, and I'm not celebrating it at all, right? Now, Halloween is a day that is associated with sorcery, witchcraft, and night of the dead. 1 Timothy 4.1 says this, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, verse 2 says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. He said people depart from the faith due to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, we've heard it said that the, or the founder of the the founder of the Church of Satan has said that, now I, I read up behind this, I found some people say this is true, found some people say it's not true, so I just went to the source. Um, Anton LaVey was the founder of the Church of Satan and I saw it on their website I went to their Twitter feed and I don't recommend you do that. Um, I, I just don't recommend you do that. Don't allow that mess to come in. And he said, Pastor, why did you do it? I did it so I could tell you. And um, I, 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 I asked the Lord to protect me before I did any of that. And um, I believe he will. And I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And, uh, but 
I, I just I don't encourage you to. He said it is said that he said I'm glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Now the Church of Satan debunks his claim, says he never said that. Um, take it for what you will. But by reading more about what they say about this day in the research, uh, I saw the Church of Satan. They said that they consider Halloween amateur hour. Meaning all the kids that are coming and doing what they do every other day of the year. Now if that's not enough to make me not want to have any part of it, that the church of Satan calls it amateur hour, that these young innocent kids are doing exactly what they do the other 364 days of the year. And then they sit back, they laugh, and they said even on their Twitter feed and on their website, they said it proves to children that embracing your devilish side can be fun. Speaking of Halloween, that comes from the horse's mouth, if you will. It's all you can find. It. If that's not reason enough, you should be ashamed. If that's not reason enough. But here, sadly, most parents are more interested in their kids liking them now yes, sir. than they are about their spiritual future. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll say that again because that was really good. Mm -hmm. But we have too many people, too many parents are more concerned about their kids liking them now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is my buddy. I love him. Do anything in the world for him. If I let you get away with stuff, then you're right. <laughs> Would you like me better if I did? <laughs> <laughs> Stand here and lie to you. But you know what? I'm more concerned about becoming a man mm -hmm. with integrity mm -hmm. and a man that don't have a bunch of garbage to wade through. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather him mm -hmm. be able to stand mm -hmm. and say, I stand against this because my daddy stood and my daddy stood with God. Mm -hmm. I stand against this because. I believe the Bible would be true. Yeah. And I'm not having any fellowship with darkness. Mm -hmm. I'm a child of light. I'm not to do that. Right. Listen, isn't it funny how pagans will make fun of Christians who created a day to celebrate the same way the pagans did? Mm -hmm. Isn't that nonsense? The, the Christians created a day, and now they celebrate it. Many Christians celebrate it the same way that the pagans did. The same reason, the same day. It, it, it's nonsense to me. God is Holy, and there is nothing within that day that is holy. That's right, that's right. We pray to a holy God of heaven, and our actions should be as to a holy God. Jesus told us to pray in Matthew 6, 9. He told us, he said, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which is in heaven, what? Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Holy be thy name. Holy is his name. For something to be holy or hallowed, something must be set aside for the use of God. What is holy about that day? What is hallowed about that day? Nothing. There is nothing. So we set apart. How can something steeped in wickedness, darkness, sorcery, and witchcraft be considered hallowed? Yeah. God hates witchcraft. Yet the church of today, for sake of argument, and allowing fun, and under the guise of reaching the community to embrace it, Hey, look, I'm sorry, guys. I need the one. Thank God. If you want trunk or treat, y'all got the wrong path. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you want a dress up party back here in the back, you got the wrong pastor. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Not so long as I'm pastor here. Y'all can fire me and y'all can dress up goblins all you want to. But let me say this this evening. I got a text message before service tonight. Actually, my wife got it. She poured it for me. Some guy said, For Christians wishing to altogether avoid pagan rooted holidays, Halloween is the easiest one to eliminate. Yet, in our well intentioned desire for devoutness, I fear many in the church are overlooking something built within the cliche traditions of Halloween. There's a wonderful opportunity to foster real life giving. To the community. 
He says Christians shouldn't just celebrate Halloween. They should be the light of the party. That's wicked. Yes, sir. Straight out of hell. Amen. And, and here's the kicker to that, Brother Matt. He posts something else. I get another text behind that. That basically he's talking about, he said, one objection I can already hear brewing is that while you may desire to celebrate tastefully, your neighbors do not. There's concern in exposing yourself or children to evil, dark imagery of how He's saying there is a concern for doing this. He said, now, I took my kids out when we were six years old. I'll, I'll just uh, tell you what it says remaining. He said, I took them out and some guy chased us with a Jason mask. Mm. And it scared his kids. It warped his kids. His kids were, it wasn't very pleasant, he says. He says, uh, we had to have speak to speak to them about it. It wasn't pleasant. But, he says, truth is, building community is often messy and unpleasant. Now, you know what he said right there? I'll move that again. You know what he just said right there? He said, reaching this community is more important than my child's soul. That's exactly right. I love the community of white people. I love this area, but I'm going to tell you something right now. These youngers right here are far more important to me. Amen. I'm the dead. Amen. 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 I, ain't going to, I ain't going to allow that kind of garbage Thank into God. my family's home. Amen. Only so that I can reach other people. No, I'm sorry, friend. It's just not going to. Hey, look, our homeschool group's fixing to have a thing, a little shindig back here. I can promise you this. There ain't no jack o lanterns going to be carved. Right. There ain't going to be none painted. Right. That painting's just as bad. Amen. Amen. Just because you don't stick a knife in it and carve it. There ain't going to be no costume contest. <laughs> they they, they going to be nobody dressing up. And Miss Jessica, I'm putting that on you. You can go ahead and let them know. If Junior was wanting to wear his Batman costume, I'm sorry. Right. So if me and all pastors just not letting it happen, <laughs> stay <laughs> home as far as I'm concerned. Yes, there ain't going to be no desserts with hands coming out of it. There ain't going to be no bloody teeth laid out there, no eyeballs. There ain't going to be nothing that says anything about ghost, goblin, sorcery, witchcraft, none of that stuff. It is a fall festival. You can have leaves. You can have all that stuff. Right, right. Amen. I've got no problem with it. Mm -hmm. I love candy corns. Amen, Miss right. Julie. Amen. I love candy corns. Reese Pieces, bring them all. Amen. But you said, Pastor, what would you do? I'll hold it. I hope I prove to y'all that I'm going to keep that mess out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope you see that. That I'll either put them on the go if they don't want to change, or if they do want to change, they can gladly stay. But I'm not allowing that within a function of Hope Bible Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. We won't have the kind of stuff. That kind of stuff for the same reason that come around Easter, we don't have bunny rabbits. Right? I think that against bunny rabbits. I like bunny rabbits. Cute, but they're tasty. Maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> you could get behind me on that. <laughs> I ain't got nothing against them, but I got something against them come Easter. Right. Why? Because the world has adopted them into the saying they are part of Easter. They ain't got nothing to do with Easter. Right. Amen. We, that's why we don't decorate that stuff. We don't, we don't decorate with. Uh, Red suits and all that kind of stuff. But let me say this tonight. We gotta move on. My God's holy. Yes. Amen. And we should conduct ourselves in such a way. Look with me in Luke, or sorry, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number 18. Deuteronomy chapter number 18. Chapter number 18 and verse number 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, 
or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. It is an abomination unto the Lord for somebody to be that. Right. Yes. So how do you think the Lord feels about somebody portraying that? Mm -hmm. That's good. Amen. That's good. The book of Revelation tells us in chapter 21 and 22 that they have their place in the lake of fire. Halloween glorifies death. Doesn't it? What is the symbol of Halloween? You've got dead zombies, skeletons, all that kind of garbage. And then you got that stuff. That's it, it glorifies death. Shouldn't we glorify the God of life? Mark 12, 27. Write this reference down. Mark 12, 27. He is not God of the dead, but the God of the living. He said, you therefore greatly err, thinking. It has unfortunately become a day that churches have gravitated to as a day of evangelism. Brother Rich, you know what I find funny about that? The churches that use this day as a day of evangelism, don't do squat else all year long. Yeah. <laughs> they might have a little BBS here or there. They might go caroling. But outside of that, they done. They might send something overseas. That's like, nope, we're done. That's it. They don't go door to door knocking. Right. They don't try to reach their community in any other way. Yep. Oh, but we're going to have a big community thing whenever you can all dress up with it as the devil and come over here and we yeah, give you candy. Treat. And we give you, we give you a little gospel track and say, thanks for showing up. Here, read that. Tell me what them kids are doing when they get home. They got candy, candy, candy. Yeah. Gospel track. Candy, 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 candy. Yep. That's what they're doing. Yep. They don't want nothing to do with that gospel track. Mm -hmm. They want nothing to do with this whenever they've got five pounds of sugar. <laughs> sitting in, and let them eat that five pounds. They really ain't looking at it then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all talking to somebody that's run a bus route before. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to parents of their kids say, why can't you come to church? Oh, they're going to this church or that church because they give them this much candy, that much candy. Yes, that's true. They ever tell them about Jesus? Well, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I have a real problem. I can tell you a story, and short story about churches down south having haunted houses. Yep. And you've got a three-minute little audio at the beginning, a Bible laid there where they present the gospel. I'm not negating the pre presentation of the gospel. Thank God for the presentation. But man, you got an audio sitting there that's skipping and crackling. At least make a new one. And they're sitting there and the guy what, laughing, cutting up, saying, man, can we go through yet? Can we go through listening to chainsaws back there chasing people? They ain't got their mind on nothing that's in front of them. Oh, we gave them the gospel. Yeah, congratulations. You played that in front of them. But did anybody ever talk to them about their soul? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. They did. It's an abomination to the Lord. Why not choose the day of darkness as a day for this when you do and act the same way as the world does on that day? Mm -hmm. Is there any difference? Is trunk or treat any different <coughs> than trick or treat? No. No. It just happens in a safe parking lot mm -hmm. yeah. with the people you know. You don't walk the streets anymore <coughs> like we used to in Whiskey. Mm -hmm. right. Going to people's houses, you didn't have a clue who <laughs> Look with me at 2 Corinthians 6. I like to use the Bible. I don't want anybody to walk out of here. I don't want anybody to listen to this and say, he preached his opinion, brother Peter. No, I'm giving y'all plenty of Bible. Right? I'm going to give you some more before the mic's over. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 14. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out 
from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be, fa be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Yes, this church may look a little different. Yes, this church may act a little different. And yes, this church does stand quite a bit here. Amen. But the only reason we are different is that we have come out from among them and we're separate. Amen. 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 What? That's good. As much as I preach, Brother Matt, about not looking like the world, why would we want to have anything to do with looking like the world? Listen, this evening, the Jesus I serve is the Jesus of this Bible. There's no variations as to who he is. There's no, well, but it makes people happy to do this. Well, they, it makes people happy to get high. Right. It makes people happy to put a needle in their heart. It makes people happy to booze it up. So we should just always make you happy. Bro. Go ahead. Stick that needle in your heart. Oh, no, that's dangerous. This is spiritually dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. 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 Just as dangerous. Mm -hmm. Listen. Christ ain't never changed. Right. He's not going to change. He doesn't change with the culture. Yeah. And he's not going to start today. He doesn't worry if everybody's going to be his friend. Mm -hmm. He stands with the Father. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. where he stands. Do you know... Do you know what a Bible Christian is? You know what we want to be? Bible Christians, right? We want to be a Bible Christian. That's one that lines up with the Christianity of the Bible. Isn't that deep? <laughs> this is what it is. Not the worldview or societal pressures to conform to what they think we should be. That's the same garbage, y'all. If you know anything about the Holocaust, that's the same garbage that Hitler did. The pastors would not stand because they were scared. Yeah. They bowed down to societal pressures. Look what's happening. Right? We've got to make sure that we make a stand. You say, oh, something like this could, it could. It really could. Why do we want to take the chance? Why would we want to take the chance? Why in the world would I want to say, hey, guys, everybody come over here on Thursday night, Friday night. Hey, let's not even have a Wednesday night service. Let's just go back here and carve jack o' lanterns. Y'all would think I'd bump my head. Y'all yeah. would think, Pastor, done gone crazy. Yeah. I ain't gonna happen. No. But it's good fun. The kids love it. I think of a whole lot more things than that is fun for kids. Yeah. Than digging in a pumpkin pit. Yeah. Amen. I'm not worried about what people think of me. I'm not worried about what the brethren say. I'm not worried about the other churches. Oh, you just don't want that. Man, we have fun. We do all kinds of stuff to have fun. By the grace of God, and only by the grace of God, this will never be a church that is guided by man. I will never be a pastor that bows down to the societal pressures of this community and to what other people may want just to gain a crowd Listen, I was preaching to 12 and 15 when I came. I preached to 5% before I leave if they didn't ask me that way. I'm not going to bow down to the precious God. God. Yeah. God. We'll be a church that stands on the biblical truths of God's holy yeah. word. I'll be a pastor that stands and that's only guided by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So this evening, the tragedy of Halloween mm -hmm. is that well-meaning churches with their pumpkin carvings, their trunk retreats, and their costume contests mm -hmm. are causing stumbling blocks to be yeah. placed yeah. Right. in the minds of children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now, when I say that, does the scripture come to your mind about somebody that might put a stumbling block in front of a child? Mill wheel around, around the neck. neck. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him mm -hmm. that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he would drown in the depths of mm -hmm. the sea. Pastor, if you really think it's that serious, I 100%. Yes, sir. Absolutely. 
it. I've seen it. I'm not preaching something that I've heard. I've seen it. I'm talking my best friend. I've seen it. You say he's weak minded. He's one of the smartest men I've ever known. Yeah. Our main focus as a church isn't to please people. It's to point people to Calvary. It's to tell people about Jesus. That's why we have Sunday school classes. That's why we take these young people, these young kids. They may sit in a Sunday school class that one of you men teach and everything's going over their head. They, got, they may sit in here when I preach. Holy Ghost can deal with their hearts on a good salvation mess. That's not what I'm saying. But in order to feed you guys on a Wednesday night, on a Sunday night, I need to give you some meat. Yeah. I need to give you some stuff that feeds your soul. These youngins ain't able to hear that. They're, it goes over their head. They're just not developed to that point yet. That's why we have these Sunday. That's why it's imperative that these ladies that teach these Sunday school classes give these kids Jesus every time we oh, walk yeah. in the door. If I ever find out anybody that teaches one of these Sunday class, Sunday school classes is not giving them Jesus every time we walk in the door, you will not be teaching a class here. Amen. You say, you can't do that. Read the Constitution. That's your okay. Why? Because it's that important. If I yeah. walk back there, Miss Jessica's not teaching them the Bible. She's doing anything outside of that. I've got a problem with that. Yeah. That's right. Amen. They're to get Jesus. Amen. Why? Because it's important. Amen. It's important, Brother Danny. Amen. That's why I don't, I don't get down with all this other stuff that everybody wants to do. Teaching them that it's okay to come put on all this guard. It's okay to come carve a jack-o'-lantern. I'm going to give you a try. I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Our main focus should be about giving them Jesus. Now listen, I'm not against having things. We're going to have something Friday night. Once a month, we have a game night. We come in. I don't preach. But I get to talk to people about their soul. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. Because people come unaware. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They come in and think, oh, it's a game night. All right. And then the pastor gets to sneak up the side of his head. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so talking about the Lord and squirm. I love the power that's in that name. Yeah. Amen. But I ain't got to dress up as something I'm not. No, amen. We're given great responsibility. Mm -hmm. Brother Matt, great responsibility to teach the children about Jesus. And not the ungodliness of this world. All for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. oh. But pastor, don't you understand? You don't want the children. Have y'all met how socially awkward my kids are? <laughs> my kids are completely socially awkward. They can't hold on a conversation. They're warped because they've got all the teeth that didn't get rotted out by all the candy, right? <laughs> Come on, man. That's ridiculous. You ain't warping the kids. You're protecting the kids. Yes, I know. Again, like I said, if this is something you've done in the past out of ignorance, Nobody's mad at you. Right. God's not mad at you. It's okay. Now, if this is something you proceed to do, or uh, if you stand at the house on, on what, Monday night? You stand at the house on Monday night with your big old bowl out there and say, oh, you know, look, a little ghost. Oh, ain't you precious. Oh, look at your little witch to cackle for me. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Why don't you go ahead and put yours on and run out there with them? Yeah. You're participating in a night that is set forth about Hades. It's set forth for darkness and death. My kids love Halloween. God's all over me. <laughs> My kids love it. <clears throat> every year they say, Dad, we're going to do what we do last year. We'll do it every year. They love it. We'll turn out all the lights. We'll close the windows. And we sit there and watch movies. We spend time as a family. And we spend time as a family watching movies. Because you turn on a light, you can You turn on a light, and everybody's trick or treat, right? Now we turn out the lights. We watch all these fools running up and down the road. We see all these people spending 50, 60 bucks trying to make sure the kids like their candy more than anybody else. And that's beyond me. But anyway, I digress. But they love. It. They love because we spend it together. Listen, this is one of those messages that will make people so mad that they'll never come here. And that's okay. That's right. And that's okay. Brother Reggie, if the Bible makes you that mad, 
and the truth upsets you that good. I said it earlier, you wouldn't want to be around here anyway. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not because of me, but because of this Bible. Yes, yes sir. sir. Amen. It's funny how people will leave a church or not come to a church over an issue like Halloween, mm -hmm. over the issue of truth. Sure. But even if they don't believe in this, they'll stay in one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give them any truth. Have mm -hmm. I therefore become your enemy because I told you the truth tonight? Mm -hmm. I hope not. I hope you understand tonight. If you've got family members that do this, give them the message. Tell them where they can find it. I'm mm -hmm. going to keep it up. I ain't taking it down. I'm, I'm not scared of anything I said tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. I won't bow down from anything I said. There's a whole lot of Bible yes, that I gave tonight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a sad day that we're living in, church. Mm -hmm. It's a sad, sad day. Mm -hmm. The people are more interested in pleasing the kids. Mm -hmm. The now. And Brother Matt, we're concerned about their soul. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that everybody that participates in Halloween is going to fall off the wagon and, and, and end up a pagan or a wicked? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But if one does, it's one too many. Yes, sir. If one leaves the church to become a pagan, mm -hmm. it's too many. Yes. Yes. Understand this tonight, you can't unscramble eggs. No, that's okay? exactly right. Most everybody in here has got raised youngins. Most. The few of us that don't. The few of the young crowd that don't happen. <laughs> but at least we know the truth going forward. Mm -hmm. So when asked about it, you've got a whole lot of Bible. Mm -hmm. Or you can just say, hey, listen, here's a message. I preached a message on it tonight. You can go back and listen to a message my pastor preached on it just a few weeks ago mm -hmm. on, on, on their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. he, he did a ten times a better job than I did, so go listen to that one. But on a sad day, mm -hmm. when churches think it's okay yeah. to play with the devil, yeah. all for sake of having more fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's about us, folks.